Stella. And I'm Tarrant. And this is Meeple University's How to Play Everdell. We've played it and we can't wait to do the How to Play video as we just received this really beautiful deluxe edition of Everdell from Kickstarter. So join us as you lead your little teams of critters into building the best city you can in the shadows of the Ever Tree. Everdell is a worker placement and tableau building game for two to four players, which also comes with a solo mode, which we won't go through in this video. Players play the role of teams of critters trying to build a city, and they will send their workers out into the forest to collect resources, and then spend those resources to build buildings or recruit critters into their city. The game plays until all players have placed all of their workers four times, and the player who has the most victory points in his or her city is the winner. To set up the game, place the main board and the tree in the middle of the table, place the resources in their allocated spaces on the board, and the victory points and occupied tokens off to the side. This region of the board here shows the basic worker placement spaces in the game. Then shuffle the more advanced forest cards and place three into these spaces in a two player game or four in a three or four player game. We're going to show you a two player game in this video. Take the four basic event tiles and place them in their designated locations on the board. Then shuffle the 16 special event cards and deal four of them onto the lower branches of the tree. These are all worth bonus points if you complete a specific objective during the game. Each player takes the six critter maples in his or her colour, places four of them on top of the tree, like so, and then take two into his or her starting area for use at the start of the game. Then shuffle up the construction and critter cards, place eight face up into the meadow, take a moment to admire how cute they are because you won't have time to focus on that when you're in the heat of battle, choose a first player, deal the first player five cards, the second player six cards, and if applicable, seven to the third player and eight to the fourth player. And place the rest of the cards in this nook in the Ever Tree. You're now ready to play. Everdell is played in a series of turns. And beginning with the first player, each player will take a turn going clockwise around the board until the end of the game. On a player's turn, he or she will take one action out of the three possible actions that are available. A player may send a worker out into a worker placement space, which will usually involve gaining resources, like so. All workers will remain on the board until they are retrieved by a specific action. A player's second option is to play a card into his or her city. The player either takes a card from his or her hand, pays its cost in resources, and then places that on the table, or the player takes any one of the eight face-up cards from the meadow, places it on the table, paying its cost, and then replacing it with the top card from the draw deck. Each card will show the amount of victory points that it will be worth at the end of the game, and will either have an immediate bonus action or an ongoing bonus effect. The player's third option is to retrieve all of his or her workers from the board and then move into the next season, taking new workers and a bonus effect depending on which season it is. Players will take turns taking one of these three actions on each turn until the end of the game. Now I'll go through each of those three options in more detail. The first option on your turn is to place a worker onto a worker placement space, which is anywhere showing a paw print. 
Once you have placed a worker, it will remain there until you take the worker retrieval action on a subsequent turn. The smaller action spaces, showing an enclosed circle, have space for only one worker, and once the worker is there, it is blocked off for other players. The larger spaces with the open circle have space for any number of meeples, including multiple meeples of the same colour. These eight basic spaces are places for players to gain resources. The player places a worker and takes whatever is printed on the sign. Three wood, two wood and a card, two resin, a resin and a card, two cards and a victory point, a pebble, a berry and a card, or a berry. The forest spaces are slightly more powerful ways for players to do the basic gain resources actions. Each forest card has two worker placement spaces on them, but the second one is used only in a four player game. Note also that if you are playing with four players, the same player cannot place two workers on the same forest space at any given time. Note that whenever you see this icon, unless otherwise specified, it will mean to draw a card from the draw deck, not from the meadow. Furthermore, you may never have more than eight cards in your hand at any given time, and if you are to draw cards when you have eight, you miss out on drawing those cards. These two action spaces allow players to discard unwanted cards for benefit. At the Haven, a player may discard any number of cards and then gain one resource of his or her choice for each two cards discarded. The Journey space, which is open only in Autumn, which is the final phase of the game, after you've retrieved your workers for the final time, a player may discard the number of cards matching the space on which he or she places the meeple and then we'll leave that there until the end of the game, gaining this many victory points to add to his or her score. Just to highlight that the 3, 4 and 5 spaces are single occupancy, and the 2 space is a big space where many meeples can go. There are two other types of action space in the game. Those on event cards and tiles, and those on red construction and critter cards. I'll go through those after I've spoken about how to play cards into your city. The second option on a player's turn is to play a card into his or her city. This means either taking a card from the player's hand, paying its cost, which is shown in the top left, and placing it into the city. Or, taking any one of the face-up cards from the meadow and placing it into the player's city, again paying the cost shown in the corner, and immediately replace the card in the meadow. A player has space for 15 cards in his or her city, and keeping them in a 3x5 arrangement is the best way to see at a glance that you're adhering to this rule. There are two basic types of cards in the game, constructions and critters. Within each of those classes there are common and unique, both constructions and critters, which are listed in small text underneath the name. When you're building up your city, you may have as many copies of a common construction or common critter as you would like, but you may only have one copy of a unique construction or unique critter. Note that there are multiple copies of the unique constructions and critters in the deck, but what the uniquity means is that each player may only have one. Note that you can see how many copies of each card there are in the deck by the number of notch marks shown at the bottom of the tree in the graphic, for example 2 and 3. Each construction has a cost to build shown in the top left in the basic building resources, resin, twigs and pebbles, and this is always the cost for a construction. Each critter has a cost to hire which is paid in berries. And so, one way to get the critters is to pay that cost in berries. Additionally, each construction has associated with it a specific type of critter. In this case, the resin refinery is associated with the chip sweep. 
if you have the specific type of construction, you can play the associated critter into your city for free without having to pay any of the berries cost. When adding a critter to your city for free like this, take an occupied token and place it on the lower corner of the card. This signifies that you can only use this building card for a critter bonus once. If you were to build a second copy of the chip sweep, you would need to pay its cost in berries. You'll notice in the artwork that you can always see the linked critter in the background of the construction art and the construction in the background of the critter art. In addition to the victory points that you will gain at the end of the game for having these cards in your city, there is a bonus or effect printed in text at the bottom of the card. And how this activates depends upon which type of card it is based on this icon and colour. The tan coloured traveller cards have an effect which will activate as soon as you play that card into your city and will never activate again. The green production cards have a benefit which activates as soon as you play the card into your city and then each green card will activate again when you pass from winter into spring and from summer into autumn, as indicated by these icons. This means that your green cards can activate as many as three times each during the game, and it's good to try to get some of these out early to help you build your engine. The blue governance cards have a bonus effect which will trigger when some other effect occurs in the game such as this one, which gives you a bonus after playing cards. The purple prosperity cards will give you an end of game victory point bonus if you achieve some other objective. This will be in addition to the base victory points that that card will be worth. The final type of card is the red destination card, and these cards have a worker placement space printed on them. Once you've built a red destination card which does not have the word open printed here, this becomes a permanent worker placement space which only you may use. On subsequent turns you can place a worker there to take the effect printed. If your constructed card has the word open printed here, this becomes a worker placement space that any player may use. If another player uses your space, he or she will take that effect, but you will gain one victory point, which you will add to your collection to add to your score at the end of the game. Note that a worker placement space on an unconstructed building in the meadow is not available for use. Now that we've spoken about how to play cards into your city, we'll come back and talk about the final sort of worker placement space which are the event tiles and cards. When you meet the requirements of an event, you may play your worker onto it to claim that event. In most cases, the requirement of the event is to have a specific number of a type of cards, such as three traveller cards or three governance cards. Additionally, for most of the special events, it requires you to have at least one copy of two specific cards in your city to claim. For example, Chip Sweep and Clock Tower. Once you've claimed an event, take the event card or tile into your collection, but leave the worker that you placed on it until your next retrieval step. The event will give you end game victory points, and some of the special events will give you an additional bonus which is taken immediately. The third option is to retrieve your workers from the board and then pass into the next season. First take back any of your coloured workers, leaving all other players' workers in place. Then refer to the top of the ever tree to determine what the additional effects are when passing in this season. The first time you pass, from winter into spring, you will gain one extra worker, and then reactivate all of your green critters and constructions. When you pass from spring into summer, you will gain another new worker, and 
immediately draw any two cards from the meadow into your hand. When doing this, take both cards, add them to your hand, and then replace both of them from the main supply. When passing from summer into autumn, retrieve both of your remaining workers, so you'll have six for the final phase of the game, and activate all of your green critters and constructions one more time. Note that you do not have to wait for all players to pass out of the current season before proceeding into the next one. And one player could be placing workers or playing cards in spring, while another player is still finishing off his or her turns in winter. Once a player has passed into autumn, he or she will not retrieve workers again. Instead, the player will play, placing workers or playing cards, until he or she is out of actions, and will then pass out of the game. Remember that in autumn, the journey spaces become available as a place for players to spend unwanted cards for victory points. Once a player has passed out of autumn, he or she takes no further part, but any player who still has workers or actions to take continues taking those actions until they have passed. Note that some effects in the game require giving cards or resources to an opponent. During the end game, when doing this, you must choose an opponent who has not passed. And if all of your opponents have passed, simply discard the resources or cards instead of giving them to an opponent. A player who has passed can still gain victory points for other players using their open buildings. Once all players have passed out of autumn, the game is over and proceed to endgame scoring. To add up your final score, add up the victory point total printed here on each card that you've built in your city. Add any victory point from tokens that you've collected through the game, victory points from events, victory points from the journey spaces on the board, and finally any purple cards will give you an endgame victory point bonus if you meet a certain objective. So add those points onto your total. The player with the highest score wins, and in the event of a tie, the player who completed the most events breaks the tie. If still tied, whoever has the most leftover resources wins, and if still tied, the victory is shared. The Kickstarter Collector's Edition comes with three little sub-modules that you can include in the game. The Extra Extra sub-module, showing this bell on the cards, provides 15 new cards which can be mixed in with the rest without learning any new rules. The Rugwart module includes three unique cards which can also be mixed in with the rest of the pack. But these cards are a little bit meaner, and so if you like to play a more gentle game, you'll probably want to leave these out. The final expansion module is the Legends module, and this does behave differently to the rest of the game, and so I'll go through the rules now. In Setup, in addition to drawing a player's normal hand of Critter and Construction cards, each player is dealt one Legendary Construction and one Legendary Critter which they keep face down and hidden from the other players, and separate from the rest of their hand. These do not count towards a player's hand limit of 8. Unused legendary cards are returned to the box unseen. During the game, you can play your legendary cards into your city in one of two ways. Either by paying the resource cost as normal, or by discarding an already built copy of the card shown in the red banner on your legendary card. In this case, you would discard the Historian to build Foresight. Once you've built a legendary card, you can never have another copy of the card shown in the top left corner during the game. In addition to the normal bonuses that a card will give you, a legendary card allows you to play one extra card into your city, above 15. For the purposes of completing special events, a legendary card counts as the card in its red banner, so you could use this card to complete this historian event. 
Note that if you upgrade a construction to a legendary construction and it was already occupied, transfer the token over. You cannot claim the free critter bonus a second time. And that's how to play Everdell. Stella is back behind the camera now, and we both hope you enjoyed the video and hope you enjoyed playing. Please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to hear more from Maple University.